Hello, in this bookends tutorial I'll be walking you through the process of adding temporary citations from bookends into word processors like Microsoft Word, Mello, Nicest Writer Pro, and Apple Pages, and then scanning the document to produce final citations, footnotes, and a bibliography. Bookends is also compatible with files saved from LibreOffice and files saved as rich text format files, or RTFs. The first step is to go to the settings in Bookends and make sure you've selected the word processor you'll be working with. For the first part of this tutorial, we'll be using Microsoft Word. At the end of the video, I'll come back to the settings and talk about a few useful options. Now that that's done, let's go over to the Formats Manager. This list includes all the formats that come with Bookends and any you've created or edited yourself. For convenience, those latter are shown in bold. Make sure the format you'd like to use in your document is checked here. I'll be starting with Word, and this is where I'm going to show off most of the key features, and then I'll show the other software more briefly, focusing on any important differences. Now we're ready to start adding references to our Word doc. First, go to Word and put the cursor where you'd like to insert the references. There are a lot of ways to insert references, and I'll show them off as we go through Word. Then go to Bookends and select a reference. Go to the Edit menu and choose Copy Citation. You can also accomplish this with the keyboard shortcut Command-Y. Now Bookends has added this temporary citation into Word, with all the information contained in a single set of curly brackets. If there were multiple references in this citation, the temporary citation would have them separated by semicolons. Next, we want to scan the document to generate the bibliography and replace the temporary citations with final citations. Go to the bookend section of the ribbon and choose Scan Document. This opens up a new window where you can select the format you'd like to use. We're going to be using APA 7th edition. Now we click OK and Bookend generates the bibliography and adds it to the end of the document. Now I'm going to show you how to add a page range to a citation. First, I'm going to press Undo and restore the document to its unscanned state. I'm doing this for clarity. There's no reason you can't add temporary citations to an already scanned document and then rescan. Also, although I'm not going to show it in this tutorial, you can rescan a document to change the format to whatever you'd like. Let's first insert a new temporary citation. This time I'm going to drag and drop the reference in. Now I go and add an at symbol, followed by a page or a page range at the end of the citation. Now I'm going to scan the document, and we can see the page range reflected in the new final citation. This feature is called Cited Pages, and it can do a lot more than what I just showed. See the bookends manual under Cited Pages for more detail on how it works. We can continue to modify the document. For example, I'll add a footnote. Now I'll add a reference to the footnote using the floating citation feature, which I invoke by double tapping the control key. There's a separate tutorial on floating citations, and I've put a link in the description. This time, let's try the nature format, which uses superscripts for its inline citations. Bookends supports something called citation modifiers, which let you adjust how your citations are formatted on an individual or ad hoc basis. With Word open in the background, I'm going to choose Edit, Copy Citation and Modifiers, or Command Control Y. This lets me put in a page range, which I showed before. It lets me add prefix text, and there's also a host of options in the Modifiers menu. There are times when writing a sentence when you may want to mention the author's name outside of citation details such as the year. For consistency, I'll be using the same temporary citation I've been using earlier, though this is normally something you'd use with a citation within a sentence rather than at the end. I'm going to choose the author in front option. Notice how that's got a caret symbol and press OK. Bookends added the temporary citation to Word and put the caret symbol at the front of the temporary citation. It's worth noting that, once you get the hang of the different symbols Bookends uses, you can type in the modifier yourself. I'm going to manually adjust a different temporary citation by putting the caret symbol up front. 
Now I scan the file and voila, you can see how the final citations have been modified. One final thing, it's easy to add multiple references so that they end up as a single group. One way is just to add several references simultaneously from bookends. In this example, I'm dragging and dropping them, but you could just as easily use the copy citation command in the edit menu or press command Y. Notice how all three references are within the same set of curly brackets separated by semicolons. But you don't necessarily have to add all the references at the same time. You can add them over time as you write your paper. Now I'm going to add the same references one after the other as though I'm editing a paper over a long period of writing. Now we have three separate temporary citations, each within its own curly brackets. I could manually remove some of the curly brackets and put the semicolons in so it looked like the citation in the previous paragraph, but there's an easier way. As long as these temporary citations are back to back with no spaces between them, bookends will recognize them as a single group. In this case, I need to remove some intervening spaces manually. Word was trying to be helpful and inserted these spaces automatically. Now I scan the document and we can see that both approaches led to the same result, a group of citations numbered one to three. Now let's take a look at Melel, which has some extra options. As I showed earlier, you'll need to go to the bookend settings to change your word processor to Melel. We'll start with the basics. Go to Melel, put the cursor down where you'd like the references and add some from bookends. I'll add with command Y. The light blue color around the temporary citations means that Melel has recognized these as citation objects. Double click on them to bring up a window. This is where you can add citation modifiers manually. I'll put a caret symbol up top to make it do an author's first citation. There are also some handy options at the bottom of the window. Next we bring up the bibliography palette. Click the scan button and press OK and bookends will generate the bibliography. Notice how the citation went from light blue to purple, showing that it has been scanned by bookends and is now a final citation. Probably the coolest feature in MLL is the live bibliography. If we enable it, we can simply drag and drop references from bookends, and MLL will automatically format them and add them to the bibliography. Now I'm going to quickly show you how to work with Nicest Writer Pro. I've already changed the bookend settings to point to Nicest Writer. Go to Nicest Writer and put your cursor where you want the citation to go. I'm using floating citations again. Go to the Tools menu in Nicest Writer, then select Bibliography, and then Scan Document. Click OK, and Bookends will add the final citations and the bibliography. Last but not least is Apple Pages. This one's a little different, but still straightforward to use. After setting your word processor to Pages in the Bookends Preferences, Open up your Pages document and put the cursor where you want to insert the references. Go back to Bookends, select some references, and add them to Pages. I'm going to press Command Y. This takes me back to Pages and inserts the temporary citations. As I showed earlier, this is the stage at which you'd modify the temporary citations if desired. Okay, now I'm ready to scan the file. This is where things are a little different from the other software I showed earlier. I go back to Bookends, go to Biblio, and I choose Scan Open Apple Pages Document. It'll ask me to choose the bibliography setting as usual. Once I click OK, it asks me to save a copy of the Pages document. Rather than modifying the existing Pages document, it's going to put the final citations and the bibliography in a new copy. After the scan, it prompts me to paste the bibliography where I want it. One final note. Pages documents cannot be unscanned or rescanned. If you want to make changes to the citations or bibliography, you need to open the original copy and then rescan. I'm going to briefly point out some important settings for customizing the way temporary citations work. Go to the bookend settings and select the Scan and Bib section. You can change a number of settings, including things like the citation delimiters. These are the symbols that will surround the temporary citations in your word processor. Next, you can choose between the different temporary citation formats. 
the, there are three default formats to choose from. The author, date, unique ID choice is usually the best choice, as it uniquely identifies the reference being cited and avoids possible ambiguities. But you can also write your own temporary citation format. Be careful not to select a pre-existing journal format, which will almost certainly create problems when you try to scan your document. Before I finish the video, two quick notes. First, you can find the complete Bookends user guide in the Help menu of Bookends. Second, if you're ever stuck, check out the Bookends forum for help. Someone else may have asked a similar question, and the Bookends developer is very active and responds to questions. Thanks for watching.